Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Niche, a genetic survival game with me, Lathrix, and of course, welcome to a brand new Let's Play. So I've decided, after seeing the comments from the previous video, and it seems like everyone likes it, I will be indeed doing a full playthrough of the game in its current alpha form, although apparently there is a new update currently on the Unstable branch, which is adding a whole host of new genes and new things as well for the future, I think it would be better if we started now as early as possible to get a basic grasp of the game before I go away for the Christmas holidays. So a new game, just going to call it a new world, and we'll get straight into the game, and also discuss a few things I didn't notice until I edited the last video. Here we are then in a brand new world with Adam and Eve. So the first thing I noticed when I was editing, and I noticed this pretty quickly and was amazed I didn't notice whilst playing, is that genes seem to have a dominance hierarchy, with the ones at the very bottom being completely recessive and always needing a double to be expressed. A good example would be with eye colour. Right now we have Eve who has double brown eyes and Adam who has double black eyes, which means all of the children are going to be both black and brown gene positive, but all of the children will be black eyed because the black eye gene is more dominant than the brown eye. That's not to say the brown is recessive because there might be another gene for a different eye colour which is weaker than it or perhaps there's another gene which could be co-dominant and result in a brand new effect. I don't really know what types of colours mix with other colours, it's not really something I've had interest with in the past, but either way it's something very important to notice especially when it comes to things like the nose, or the face I guess this section is, the regular eyes, the body and the legs, because this lovely little body section, there's the big body here, which is definitely less dominant than the normal body. That's why none of the children are ever big bodied, because it's always going to be either normal and normal, or big and normal, and because normal is more dominant than big, they're always going to be normal. The same goes for the big nose and the poison fangs. The poison fangs seem to be more recessive than the big nose. Now I'm going to keep on calling them more recessive until I have proof which genes are truly recessive and which are not. Another thing is, we need to make sure to keep on bringing in animals with different immunities. It doesn't matter if we're doing okay right now, it's better to have a bad trait and a new immunity than to have a good trait and keep on using the same immunities over and over again, because eventually there's going to be problems. Okay, you can harvest from there. And next turn we have our first child. And now I'm going to select some mutators. So what I would like is to force the big body into our gene pool. So let's have it there. And then we're also going to try and force... I'm going to say the poison fangs. Also, spit snout, no effect. We do not want this under any circumstance. We could also perhaps instead put the runner leg here. This way, we could try to take away the smaller paw, which does seem to be more dominant. It always seems to come through. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but either way. Also, this animal is the perfect example of what I was just talking about. It has the poison fangs and the big body, but both of these are recessive to the big nose and the normal body. Either way though, at least it does have these, which is good. You harvest and do a little bit of exploring. Same with Eve. A little bit of exploring. We also need to remember to try and harvest first. The harvesting should always come first before the actions in case we accidentally starve our animals. You go back, do that dirty thing that you do so well, and continue exploring a little bit. Already Adam's got a cold. That's just annoying, so run a leg and big body. The new child has double runner legs, so this is a good one because, ahem, this child, this male, double runner legs, sadly doesn't exhibit double big body, but it will not pass on the small paw, and this of course is better than no paw. Black eyes and brown eyes of course is showing the black eyes. 
So... I need to keep you safe. You, I'm going to try, as much as it is kind of cruel, to never breed the animals which have the no paw. Because to me, that's sickly. We don't want to keep that in the gene pool because it offers no benefit whatsoever. It's not going to hurt them, but it's not going to be good either. You can stay there and harvest for now. You can do a little bit of exploring. Next turn. A new child, which has... Okay, at least double runner legs. B and G. Huh, a weird thing is this male and this female could actually breed. Because they don't share any genes in common. Do they? No, they don't. B and G and A and F. I and F. Okay, that's a shame, because those two, if those two could have bred, that'd be better. Oh wait, no, they're both male. Never mind, I thought one was female. I got very mistaken. I should have harvested first. That's what I was explaining before. Harvest first, if possible. Thank you. And you will grab those two. You go over, do the dirty. So yeah, we want this one to breed. So what I need to find then is a new nesting ground and perhaps a new female, which isn't of this lineage. New child, sadly bringing in the no poor, but she does, so he does, have the double big body. But I feel like the no poor is definitely the worst there. So much so, I don't think I want to breed it, even though it does have the big body trait, which I do want. You're a female, you have no poor, you're a male, okay, yeah, so you continue to go forwards. Eventually, I do want to breed you. I also want to breed you, so you can go this way towards that nesting ground. There's no need to keep them so clustered. The only ones I'm going to keep clustered around the original parents are going to be the ones I don't want to breed with. So, this young male and this adult female are going to be here to protect this group and nothing else. That's all they're there for. Oh dear. I am actually going to move back here because I don't want Adam to take any damage. I'm going to use these two to actually protect the group. Oh. You have okay genes. Okay, I will breed with you. Um... You, I want still to... Ah, oh, darn it. Harvest first, even if there's pressure. Okay, Eve and Adam, I need you to be protected. So, you move there and fight. The sad thing is, Adam is actually the better fighter here. Because he has Venom. So, I am going to risk him. There we are. Took some damage from starving, but really damaged the enemy carnivore. There's its health. Don't attack Adam, don't- Oh, not Eve! Eve can harvest, the child can... The child could actually fight right now, but I wanted to move away because obviously I wanted to breed again. Enemy is dead, we can feed from it. Excellent. And the male continues to the new nest. Which one of you did I want to breed with? This one. Even though you don't have the big body at all. Yes, you are female! Darn it, you have no poor! Why do you have no poor, you dum-dum? B and C. Oh, you're not actually a good candidate anyway. Okay, you're going to be the guardian for that male. Oh, we've got food, so let's do a bit of exploring. B and C. You could mate with that male over there who is aging. You're not a particularly good candidate, but but you do have... Actually, do you have any unique genes at all? C. Do we have C in the gene pool yet? No, we don't. So using her would be beneficial, 
because she is bringing C into the group, thus making everything more diverse and increasing the chance of us having healthy offspring until the end. Even if it's going to weaken us by having the no poor. The worst thing that could happen is eventually having children with double no poor. That's just awful. The new child, Mira, is very, very healthy. B and F. B and G. Okay, so you can't mate of any of the others, but you are a decent candidate, so I will put you near one of the other nests. Can, can, can anyone else harvest? I'm kind of out of food here. Nope, next turn then. Oh, I literally didn't realize that mating was consuming food. Well, that's something I've just learned. There's loads of food around here, so any animal we're just using to harvest. That female is almost an adult, so we'll move her over next turn. You can take her place there between those two berry bushes to harvest. Essentially, the ones with the bad paw are our drones. They are there only to feed. Adam's dead next turn. We need a new male. And of course, the children can never mate with the parents. Some of the siblings can mate with each other, as creepy as it is, because they can have one gene from both parents the opposite genes from each parent as the other sibling, they can't mate with the adult, with the parents. New child! Decent, okay, you have I and F, you are female. You could mate, actually, you're the perfect mate for that male. And you're also his sister! B and F. Yeah, you're much better than the other female there. Well, it's sad, and our gen our genetic diversity isn't increasing, ignoring the stammering there, because, well, apparently today isn't my day for speech. That would be a better combo. So that young female is going to move over there with that male. You just stay there and keep harvesting. Eve, I'm afraid, you're eventually going to pass. Now this female has good genes, so she'll come back and take Eve's place until we find a male which will match her. On the upside, double runner legs mean you can move really, really far, really, really quickly. Thank you, drones! Actually, one of, one of the drones should move over here with all the food. That's better. That's better. Well, Eve... I'm afraid there's no one for you to mate with anymore, so you're now on the explore duty like all the others. Why are you here? You're a decent male. IF. But you're not as good as him. Okay, she's now pregnant, the first child of the, that little group. This fa this female, which is the IF, is going over to you. And I need to harvest. Okay, I've got to harvest this one, that's good. I've got a little bit of food. Not much, but a little bit. Thankfully, doing the sight thing doesn't count as a food... Con oh, it does count as a food consumption! But, l but last episode we looked and we couldn't figure out any problems with that. Huh. That's kind of annoying. Does it always count as food consumption, or is it like a half, perhaps? No, it always seems to. Huh. Well, lesson learned, then. You're a decent female, you're going over there. Okay, so we have Mira over here, who's F and B. You are I and J- Oh. Oh, but you have the no poor gene. No, I don't want to breathe that back in. Okay, you're B and F. You are I and F. So there's a chance one of these two 
gene sections can breed together and breed a child which will be okay for that one. This gets so confusing when you're trying to micromanage. Next turn. You both share a gene, you're not breeding together. IJ, uh, we could... Uh, do I really want to breed back in the no poor? It's already happening over here. Oh wow, double big body. B and F. Exactly the same as her. Okay, so, so it's also a chance that these two can breed a child, which will be compatible. You don't need to move over just yet. Okay, next turn. We do want you to breed, though, this child here. So you are B and F. Exactly the same. Okay, so... We could try and kill this rabbit. Aha! Food! Okay, now you move over, because next turn you can breed. You two breed this turn. And then you can harvest. I F. Who's better, you or you? You're better, okay. No need to swap the two males. New child with a with an adorable little tuft of hair. B and F, you are male. I and F can't mate with that. Let's move you there. Please don't be- Oh, hello! You're, you're not a predator, you're adorable! Ooh, you are bringing in a brand new immunity, and you have double ram, and you have the berry paw! Wonderful, we found a really good male. You move over there, because you're obviously pregnant. Um, you are C and I, so anyone who doesn't have the I gene. Or the C gene. Okay, this male needs to go with this female. Didn't harvest then, because I was so focused on all the other stuff. You're an adolescent. You're a bit younger than her, actually a fair bit, which is a shame, because she's also took damage. So you won't get too many children. But, there's the chance of having the double big body ram berry poor. Oh wow, hello. You're pretty. Perfectly healthy. I and B. Female. Okay, this is good. We actually have a fair bit of diversity currently. Over here we have C, B, and F. No, C, B, I, and F. So a lot of variety over here. Over here we're going to have B, F, C, I. And over here we have I, F, B, G. So right now, in terms of genetic diversity, we're doing really well. There's no chance we're going to make many sick children. There's no chance of the incest thing happening, which is really good. This male really saved this group. Also, you're adorable. Just look at him, it's really cute. Okay, so I think this is a good part to call it now. We have three different breeding couples as soon as this one comes of age. They're all breeding decent traits other than this group, which is still sadly occasionally breeding the no poor. And of course, the no poors will not be bred with no matter how much I need the children unless it brings new genes like she did. That's the only reason she's being used because she had a brand new immunogene which we could use in the populace. Okay, I find this is a game where concentrating and commentating are really, really difficult because you need to focus on so many little details, it's very easy to miss. So I do apologise if I've been missing details. Either way though, I've really enjoyed this episode, I really hope you've been enjoying the series. 
and I'll, I will be carrying on with our little clan. So, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Niche, a genetic survival game, is a series you would like to see continued in the future. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.